when did journalists tell you that you were an activist and what, what were the kinds of activities that you were Yeah, I, I was questioning, when I came to the realization this was a harmful practice, it only happened when my daughter was born. It was only a health professional that pointed this out to me because, you know, I live in an environment where all the women have had it done, so I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. But I thought, wait a minute, how come this information was not in my school? How come my family doctor didn't bring this up? How come my midwife didn't say anything when I was pregnant with my daughter? So it really started from a place of anger, but I've always asked questions. Actually, my mum would always say, if you hang out with Layla, be ready for a volume of questions at you. So I was asking politicians, policymakers, you know, got different government departments, why, 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 why? And people have seen me ask this a lot of times. And then I think three, four years later, a journalist said, so lady, you've been campaigning against this for, for the past few years. And I said, oh, I didn't realize I was campaigning. I was asking a lot of questions and no one's answering these questions and I need answers. So that's, I guess, how it started. I didn't even know there was a title for what I was doing at the time. Um, for me, an activist was like someone like Nelson Mandela who was in prison somewhere. To me, that was my image of an activist. Um, I guess that was a learning process where activism comes in different forms of shapes. So for me, that's when I realized but I knew fundamentally deep down, it was never about FGM. It was about injustice that I really disliked. I always say to people, you know, if you're going to be challenging FGM, you need to challenge all forms of human rights. You can't pick and choose. It's, I always say it's not like a Pizza Hut buffet where you choose human rights. You just cannot choose. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, what would you say to somebody who, who thinks that they can choose? I really struggle with that, because, and, I've, and it happens amongst human rights campaigners. I've seen human rights campaigners who would say, you know, I'm against early child marriage, but I would not speak on LGBT rights. And I said, well, that doesn't make sense to me. You're either for human rights or against it. I guess those who feel that way, I would say you really need to think about where those views and beliefs are actually coming from. And how would you like it if someone controlled you based on some beliefs that you have and the other one doesn't have. So for me, I really struggle with that. HRF has been, uh, Human Rights Foundation has been quite a special platform for me because a lot of us work on different things, but fundamentally we all agree that people uh, have the freedom to choose who they need to be, but we also need to seek justice when people are harmed. So for me, that's quite key. What inspires you to continue this work? Because I think that... Mm. I mean, it's, it's hard work and it's really grueling and I guess emotionally draining as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, what inspired, I mean, my inspiration for my work was really my daughter. Again, that's why I didn't know I was being an activist. For me, I just wanted to make sure she lived in a world where she wasn't going to be judged just because she was a girl. Because it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't just about FGM. Me, me protecting from FGM wasn't enough as a mother. I had to make sure she lived in an environment where she, if she wanted to go and play football, no one's going to judge her for it. If she wanted to become an engineer, no one's going to say to her, that's not a job for girls. You know, I needed her to be safe or she got paid same as the other man in her same company that she might be working for. So for me, she's really become my muse for the work that I do. So it always comes back to, is she safe enough to go out to that world? And that's really been a challenge itself because there are days when you're very disappointed. But it is emotionally and physically draining. Um, I've had death threats. I've had fatwas on me. Do you know what fatwa is? It's when religious groups point you, point you out to die, basically. So as activists, we, I take that as a compliment. It means they're listening to me. So they actually paid attention. <laughs> so for me, especially in the women's movement, globally, women's movement is something I'm absolutely passionate about. I don't think we live in a world where women are still safe. Um, until that happens, women like myself will continue to make trouble for a lot of men, I guess, who are politicians. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and your activism, uh, be, I mean, uh, started initially in London. Yeah. You were already living and, and yeah. working in London when mm -hmm. you started. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I, I've lived in London, but I, I, I haven't been back to Somali because I can't for safety issues. Uh, but I have been back to other parts of Africa. Um, I worked in Kenya, Senegal. Recently, uh, in the last few months, I've been to Nigeria. So going back home for me is very important. I will go back to Somali one day, definitely. I will definitely go back. Um, that won't stop um, any fatwas. It's just finding the right time and the right place. I need someone to 
help me sneak in. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's out there who has a plane that could take me, <laughs> take me back, please call me. <laughs> I like that attitude. I like that. Uh, can you tell us about Face of Defiance? Face of Defiance was a very special project. It really stemmed from um, the media really making us look like these women. Every time I did an interview, I give an example. Every time I did an interview, I mean, this is who I am when I give an interview. But once it's printed, I was this very sad looking, you know, a woman who's depressed in the corner somewhere. I mean, like, yeah, we suffer from depression, it's fine, but that's not who, who we are. And I really wanted images of um, these women to be seen as these beautiful, powerful women. I really wanted them to, f I wanted them to feel really good about themselves when they saw the pictures. And this is a chance for me to even practice my writing. So I wrote the story. It was finding a really good photographer to work with. And Jason Ashford, who's an amazing photographer, you know, kindly enough said, hey, you know, let's partner up on this. And it's been great. And it's, it's so nice to see. I've actually seen a lot of not just the anti fgo movement, but other organizations are now using really positive images of campaigners. You know, we are, we do have a life outside of constantly shouting and screaming and being angry all the time. We do, we do laugh <laughs> and do other things other people do. Um, so that's why for me that project was very important. And to show the women that they are beautiful. I think people need to see that. Yeah.